removal of an integrated failed dental implant can be a daunting and a very traumatic task, uh, traditionally requiring surgical osteotomy of the implant using trough burrs. With this technique, a trough burr, at least one millimeter wider than the implant itself, is used to cut the bone around the implant and remove it. This often leaves a larger defect that requires bone graft uh, to restore and build its foundation for a possible future replacement. A newer technique now allows a much less invasive and less traumatic approach uh, removing failed dental implants. Uh, utilizing a unique implant removal kit, high reverse torque forces, uh, generally in the range of 200 to a maximum of 400 newton centimeters, uh, is applied to the implant, which breaks the mechanical bond at the bone implant interface and allows easy removal of the implant. Depending on the degree of the integration, sometimes a much less uh, reverse torque uh, may be needed. Obviously, this technique is uh, much less traumatic to the surrounding bone as it does not require um, an osteotomy. And it also, it limits the size of the bony defect to the actual size, size of the implant being removed. It is also uh, significantly faster. Now let's take a look at how we use uh, this high reverse torque kit to remove the implant. First, an appropriate size fixture removal screw is engaged into the well of the implant and it is rotated clockwise on this, until it's tight. There are several different sizes of this uh, screw that are available based on the top of the implant. The screw is then torqued clockwise with a wrench to 40 to 80 newton centimeters. Next, a corresponding fixture removal device is fit over the screw and it turned counterclockwise until its serrated edges are engaged on the top of the implant platform. Using the wrench, uh, it is reverse torqued until the implant bone bond is broken and the implant is loosened. Uh, generally, a reverse torque of 200 uh, to a maximum of 400 newton centimeters is sufficient to remove uh, most implants, again, depending on their size and length. If the implant doesn't rotate with this torque, then a minimal osteotomy can be done uh, for about two or three millimeters at the crestal aspect, and then the implant can be reverse torqued again, and this generally uh, successfully uh, reverses the implant. And here is the implant still attached to the removal device, uh, which is then separated. Again, the advantage of this technique is that the bone is preserved quite well. Uh, so next we'll uh, cure uh, any loose or fibrous tissue from the site. In this case, the apex of the defect was noted to be communicating with the sinus floor, uh, but covered with a soft tissue, probably made of the sinus membrane and perhaps uh, some inflammatory granulation tissue. Because of the buccal dehiscence and epical exposure to the sinus, uh, this site was grafted. Initially, a small resorbable membrane was inserted into the site and pushed up uh, superiorly uh, to the level of the sinus floor. Next, uh, mineralized freeze-dry bone was uh, packed into the site, uh, again with caution not to extend it beyond the sinus floor level. And the lateral aspect was uh, also grafted further and covered with a resorbable GTR membrane. Uh, for closure, a very um, small amount of uh, periosteal scoring was necessary uh, to release the flap and allow a tensionless closure. Uh, PDGF is uh, highly recommended uh, in such uh, cases which helps with the healing process and maturation of the soft tissue. Uh, the site is allowed to heal for about four to six months before a new implant is placed.